So I think we have to just cover a little bit because we kind of finished in the middle of the, um, the paragraph last time. So we just got to backtrack a little bit so we can, everyone can be on board, inshallah. So he says, one frequently hears the villains of today replying, when asked about why they abandoned obedience and committed transgressions. This is something which God has predestined us to do, they say. We, can, we cannot avoid it, but are subjugated slaves. This is fatalistic or jabariya. This is the fatalistic jabari outlook. And those who hold that, and those who hold such an opinion are implying, although not explicitly saying, that there was no point in sending messages and, re and revealing books. How can someone who claims to have faith argue in favor of himself against his Lord? When God is the most profound, when God is the most profound argument against all his creatures, how can a believer be willing to imitate the polytheist who said, "Had God so wished, he would not have we would not have associated anything with him, nor would our fathers, nor would we have forbidden anything." He has uh, he has not heard God's reply to them through his prophet saying, "Have you any knowledge that you can exhibit?" For us, is that what it is? Yeah. You follow nothing but, but conjecture, you only guess. And even the idolaters, when they return to God, will not be able to use such an untenable argument. On the contrary, they will say, Our Lord, our evil fortune overwhelmed us, and we were people astray. And also, Our Lord, we now have seen and heard. Send us back so we will do right. We are now convinced. Okay, so that whole paragraph, I know it's a bit long and everything. But that, that's the, the essence of um, the, the believer giving up their own will. And, and we, we talked a little bit about this last time, that us being in the Western world, you know, we have power over most things, so we believe and so we think, because of cause and effect, that it's difficult for us to be told that, no, 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 don't use your power. No, no, you don't actually have any power. Or no, there's something above you. Because even, even in terms of governance, which is kind of what this is about, even in terms of government, it's the government of the people, for the people, by the people, as it's said. So that means the people, it's their will that counts. It's the, it's the people's will that it can even change what's right and wrong. What's right and wrong, well, as an example, um, a prohibition, for example, in the United States, where they, they outlawed alcohol for about seven or eight years in the 30s there, it became illegal. So it was, it was wrong now. No one's allowed to drink. It's illegal to drink. If you get caught drinking... It's like contrabands like heroin and, and, uh, and cocaine and whatever else is around these days, whatever, ecstasy, ice, whatever it is. So it became like that. Then the people said, no, no, we want to drink. So then they let people drink again. So it's, it's when a person has that power, when they feel they have that power, that they can even determine what's right or wrong, then how, how can they be ready to, to subjugate themselves to a greater power? Where does this greater power, well, I'm living my life, I'm eating every day. I'm drinking every day. I live, I've got a roof over my head. I can switch on the light. The light comes on. I can turn the tap. The tap brings out the water. Hot water, mind you. Boiling water is the case might be. I can get fruits of the summer and winter and fruits of the winter and summer. And I can keep them for weeks and weeks on end, even months on end if I put them in the freezer. Weeks on end if I put them in the, in the fridge. So that gives us a false sense of power, a false sense of capacity to do something, a false sense of of if you like, being a, a demigod or a pseudo-god or a semi-god or whatever you want to call it. Whether, whether we cognitively comprehend that or not, that's what this world is telling us, and particularly the first, the first, first world, if you like. That's what it's telling us. Maybe we're not listening because we're just using it and we're just going about doing our, our everyday business. But the Prophet of Allah, of Allah he said, the most thing I fear about you is a shirk al-khafi, or the lesser shirk. And that's like going to the, to the cupboard or going to the tap and pouring out a glass of water and just drinking and saying, oh, the tap is going to break my thirst. The water, excuse me, is going to break my thirst. But it's not the water. It's the order. Of, the reality of it is it's the order of Allah. Or a better example is medicine. I'm going to take the medicine. I'm going to get better. There's no guarantee there. Most medicines, most medicines actually don't work. You know, it's a placebo effect and all that sort of stuff that goes on. So two sick people with the same sickness take the same medicine. One gets better, one gets worse or stays the same. Does that mean the medicine worked? What do you reckon? That was contagious. Hey? It was contagious and it was to be placebo. If, the, if two people took the same medicine, they had the same sickness, they took the same medicine. 
One got better, one didn't get better. Is it the medicine? It can't be, right? Because if it's the medicine, then both of them would have got better. So it's something else. It's another factor. Whatever science might tell you, the research might tell you, whatever it is. But really, what is it? The immune system. Really, sickness is a weakness of the immune system. And so, from Allah, that's what we believe. And so, because that nexus isn't there for many of us, because we have, we just, we just do things automatically. We don't have to think about it. Back in the day, a hundred years ago, not even. Some of you may or may not remember, so I'm not going to have to mention who it is. In Australia, they had septic tanks. I remember it. They got a septic tank means there was no plumbing underneath that goes to wherever it used to go, Malabar. When we were young, we used to go surfing, and we used to see stuff for a lot of turds floating in the water. For real. For real. They used to just dump it out at the ocean because there wasn't many people in Sydney. And so, but then when Sydney got bigger and bigger, they had to take it out to the deep water outfall. So it's the same thing, but now it's like kilometers and kilometers out and kilometers and kilometers deep. So before that, what happened with septic tanks? There was no plumbing, you know, like there is today, which we don't even think about. And then once a week, once a month, whenever it was, I don't remember, I was pretty young, but I remember this truck would come and suck out all the, the sewage from your house. Hey, pretty nasty stuff. But we're first world people. We don't have to worry about that anymore, do we? They got it in the country, yeah. Some places they still have them because there's no, there's no drainage. Or even worse than that, go to one of those open-air toilets. You've been to one of those? You haven't, eh? Yeah. Like when you're on the, on the road, you know, like driving um, and you stop at the rest stop, going to Melbourne or Brisbane or wherever it is. That's the reality, but not what we have with our nice spray stuff and candles <laughs> and whatever and the water takes it. So that, you proved my point. Thanks. I appreciate it, by the way. So that's the reality. Because we live in the first world, we don't have to deal with these things. That's not something we have to... We don't have to think about where our next meal. Alhamdulillah. It's a nama. It's a blessing. The Prophet said, if poverty was a person... Or I think the Sayyidina Ali said it. If poverty was, was a person, I would have killed him. Because poverty, it's a fitna. It makes people leave. You know, I heard some people saying in Indonesia, some people leaving their deen just for you know, a box of noodles because they've got no food. So they're leaving Islam and whatever else. So it's, it's not easy. Alhamdulillah, both sides is, isn't easy. It's all a test depending on what our circumstance and situation are. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to see the reality of the things. Because the reality is what gives us peace. Right? And if we always give that example, we live, we've got all these things in the first world. We're so happy, alhamdulillah. Why is it the biggest cause of death? for males between 18 and 40-odd, 40 45 I think it is, is suicide. That's not a statistic that you would think would apply to a country where people have everything, where people don't have need. So obviously it's more than that. Human beings need more than just to eat, sleep, drink, procreate, whatever. They need, there's something that, that the human being lacks from inside that if it's not present with them, then they, they won't be what? Content. They won't have ridha. They won't be pleased. All right, so that's what the um, that's what the basis of 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 this chapter is, and and in particular, it's about the conversations that we have with ourselves. It's about those conversations, like what the people, what these people, the Jabariya or the fatalistic outlook, they said that what we couldn't do anything else because it was written upon us. It was written upon us. But what the Imam's saying, I think we should read it in Arabic a bit. He says, وَكَثِيرِ مَا تَسْمَعْ مِنْ سَفَلَتْ أَدْنَاءِ الزَّمَنْ حِينَ يُقَالُ لَهُمْ مَا لَمْ تَتْرُكُونَ مَا لَكُمْ تَتْرُكُونَ الطَّاعَاتِ وَتَفْعَلُونَ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ فَيَقُولُونَ هَذَا شَيْءٌ قَدْ قَضَاهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا وَقَدَّرَهُ لَنَا وَلَا مَحِيصَ لَنَا عَنْهُ وَإِنَّمَا نَحْنُ عَبِيدٌ مَقْهُرُونَ فَهَذَا هُوَ مَذْهَبُ الْجَبَرِيَّةِ بِعَيْنِهِ وَمُنْتَحَلُّهُ قَائِلٌ بِلِسَانِ حَالِهِ إِنْ لَمْ يَقُلْ بِلِسَانِ مَقَالِهِ لَا فَائِدَةَ فِي إِرْسَالِ الرُّسُلِ وَإِنْزَالِ الْكُتُبِ وَيَا عَجَبًا كَيْفَ يَصْدُرُ مِمَّنْ يَدْعِي إِيمَانًا مَنْ يَدْعِي الْإِيمَانِ الاحتجاج لنفسه على ربه ولله الحجة البالغة على جميع خلقه أم كيف يرضى المؤمن لنفسه أن 
يتشبه بالمشركين قائلا لو شاء الله ما أشركنا ولا آباؤنا ولا حرمنا من شيء ولا يسمع ما رد الله عليهم به إذ قال لنبيه قل هل عندكم من علم فتخرجوه لنا إن تتبعون إلا الظن وإن أنتم إلا تخرصون ثم إنه لا لا يسع المشركين إذا رجعوا إلى الله أن يحتج بهذه الحجة الداحدة الداحدة عند الله بل يقولون ربنا غل وقالوا مست قالوا ربنا غلبت قالوا ربنا غلبت علينا شقوتنا وكنا قوما ضالين أوصى سي ربنا أبصرنا وسمعنا فرجع فرجعنا نعمل صالحا إن موقنون so the reason why we read in Arabic as well is so we can get the, the, the blessing from the words of Imam al-Haddad and also the spiritual support from, the, from Imam al-Haddad and from the people that have read this, the book before us. And so at the end, the people who have been coming regularly and, and who want to get the, the, the ijazah, in other words, the, um, the permission that you've completed the book, it has to be in Arabic because Arabic is the language of the, of the Quran and the Prophet of Allah. So we'll go, we'll go through it because it's, it's, it's really relevant to the to the thought processes that, that we have as, as first world people, generally as human beings, but for us it's more profound because we don't, we don't have to worry about surviving. surviving. Survival is pretty much taken care of. And that's one of the blessings of being in the first world, in Australia in particular, where we have a socialised democracy, as the Americans call it, where even if you can't look after yourself, the rest of the community will look after you. That's a great thing. That's, that's sensational that that happens. In other countries, they do it as well, but it comes back to individual responsibility. Whereas in Australia, with the social welfare system that we have, it's a communal responsibility that everyone's taxes they take and GST and whatever other taxes they take from us, they give it back to those who are, who are in need. So that, that's a good thing in the system in which we live in, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. So he says, how can someone who claims to have faith argue in favor of himself against his Lord? When God is the most when God is the most profound argument against it, he says Walillahi al-Hujja. He says in Arabic. That's another reason why we keep the Arabic, because you know we don't want to get lost in translation. وَلِلَّهِ الْحُجَّةَ الْبَالِغَةَ Right, so is that what it's missing? When God's, you yeah, know, that's right. When God's is the most, that's true. So to God belongs, is that the apostrophe is saying, apostrophe means belonging to that, the one who's apostrophized. So it's, it's God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has the حُجَّةَ الْبَالِغَةَ now the Hujj al is the response to what they say. So when, when they when they talk about Rabbana Ghalabat Alaina, when they say that um, our Lord evil our evil fortune overwhelmed us and we were people astray. Yeah, they said that you know our circumstances, that's the second part. So the Hujj al Baligha is al 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 means there's there's no doubt about it. It's it's come to its full fruition, so to speak. It's full capacity. If anyone doesn't understand, just let me know, all right? Just because it's not about talking, it's about understanding. Yeah? Don't get shy. If you get shy, tell the person next to you to put their hand up. Tell them to answer the question. Ask the question. All right? So it's open. Hujja. There's no doubt about it. The, 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 the Hujja also, in, in, I've always had problems finding a definition for the word in, um, in English. But basically, is a Hajjahu, if we talk in the Arabic language, Hajjahu. And he, it's, it means he put, him, he put that person in a circumstance where he couldn't say but that thing. So like rhetorical, like a rhetorical question. If someone wants to ask a rhetorical question, is the sun going to shine tomorrow? Like, yeah, of course. You know? So it's kind of like that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his greatness subhanahu wa ta'ala and through the world that's out there and through the Quran and through the prophets and through all the prophets and through all the books and through our own, our own selves like it's a sign that one can't deny. 
It's undeniable, in other words, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then all the things that we always say, that that's the basis is the faith, and all the things that once a person believes in, that's it, they've got to act. As we always say, if someone believed that there's a million dollars, a million is not enough anymore, a hundred million dollars somewhere, stashed somewhere, and it's buried, gold, buried treasure of South Head, if they truly believed that, you'd just find them there digging. If they didn't believe that, you would never find them there digging. So that's why belief is, is so important, because belief, it's the, it's the, it's the, the dafa, it's the, the, the essence that pushes a person to action. And so that's why it's the huj, it's, Allah necessarily exists. There's no way that Allah can't exist. And even our human faculties in terms of our intellect, it leads us to that conclusion if we're, if we're truly looking for it firstly, and secondly, a person has a sound mind. There's no way that a person can't come to the conclusion that there's a great being. Maybe they don't call it Allah, maybe they don't call it God, but they come to the realization that there is a force out there that has created all things, that knows all things, and that's in control of all things. Excuse me. So it's, that's the most profound argument. And the other one is the, the, the good old philosopher, he, he was a non-Muslim, he saw an Arab who's like a Bedouin, who's a Muslim. And he said to the Arab, what do you know? You know, you're a bit of a dope. I'm intelligent, I'm intellectual, I'm very smart, whatever, I'm highly educated. You're a bit of a dope. Why would you even believe in God? How can you prove to me that God exists? And then the Bedouin said to him, what's this over here? And he said, it's camel dung. He said, all right, if there's camel dung, does that mean there's a camel? And the guy said, yeah. He said, there's the, the whole world is like the camel dung. Then there has to be a creator. So the, the thought process of, of an individual and the way that a person thinks and the way the person relates back to God, if they're, 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 don't worry about relating it back to God, but the way that a person thinks, if they're sound and they're truly looking for the truth, they'll, they'll come to the conclusion that God exists, Allah whatever you want to call some divine overwhelming power and the better ones they gave examples like that and then we know the story about Abu Hanifa as well don't we Abu Hanifa is one of the famous scholars he's an imam al -Azam. he's called the, the greatest of the imams and you know always the, the you know the um, the agnostics or whatever you want to call them the disbelievers they, they they're like oh no you know God doesn't exist God doesn't exist they already said all right that's it I'm going to debate you guys Tomorrow we'll go at this island, everyone be there at whatever time it was, uh, 2 o'clock, let's say it was midday. Be there at midday, etc. Then midday, they went there, they, they, they went to, at midday, he wasn't there. And he was known Abu Hanifa, he was a trader as well, super honest. When he gave a commitment, he was always there. Midday came and passed, he didn't come. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, afternoon, then he shows up in the afternoon. They go, what happened? Why were you late? He goes, you know, I was coming to the, to the river to cross to go to the island. I didn't have a boat. So then all of a sudden, you know, these trees started coming around out of nowhere, flying around, and they turned into wood, and they formed into a boat, and then a sail came out of nowhere and formed into a sail. And then not only that, but this, the boat sailed by itself without me doing anything, without a crew, through the rapids and through past the reefs and past the rocks and dangerous area, and I just got off the, rock, I just got off the boat, and I came now. They looked at him, and they were like, is this guy for real? And then they, you know, they didn't say it. They said, are you, are you normal? He said, well, if you can't believe that happened, how can you believe the whole world came into existence with the constellation of day and night and the movement of the sun and the moon and the stars and gravity and water and, 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 and. So they're the type of things that the person who's, whose mind is sound and they're looking for truth, they're the type of things they come up with. And so for us to really, to really be content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree and for us to really be content with Allah we have to keep that in mind when things happen in our lives. When something doesn't go our way, when the computer doesn't connect to the printer, worst thing ever, <laughs> right? And the printer stops working and the, the doesn't scan and whatever, it's from Allah. <coughs> uh, what do they call it, techno stress, <sighs> right? Or you, you take your new, your new phone, new laptop, new whatever somewhere and you pull it out and you're all happy with it and it just doesn't want to work anymore. It's from Allah. Right? And it's not saying, oh, yeah, I know Allah's God, yeah, no worries, but do it my way. No. That's not really, that's not contentment. As soon as we come to the conclusion that, you know, that, why? Then I plugged it in and I paid the company and I paid, how much does the phone cost? 1500 bucks for my phone and five grand for my computer and 10 grand for my printer and whatever else it is. And, you know, the company, the software, and blah, blah, blah. That's as far as I can go. 
Didn't work. What kind of a company? I'm going to complain. I'm going to ring up. I'm going to take them to fair trading. I'm going to sue them. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. We're the, if, we, if we don't turn it back to Allah and we keep it that it's my, my power. I paid for the computer. I pressed the button. I paid the electricity bill. I, then we're going to get stressed out. We're going to get super stressed out to the point of mental illness. Because we don't, we don't control anything. And if Allah, through His infinite mercy and His infinite wisdom and His capacity to make judgment of all things, decides that your phone, printer, laptop isn't going to work, what can you do about it anyway? Call every single, what do we call that thing, the genius bar last time? Call all the genius bars you want in the whole world. Right? Call all the engineers you want in the whole world. Get every single IT expert in the universe. Allah has decreed that thing is not going to work. And then the other thing happened to me, which happened today. My printer, not, it says not connected to my computer. And I was printing all day. I was loving it. <laughs> it's on the machine. It's saying not printing, not connected. But it's upon Allah. I just I didn't left it. Didn't, it was, but Allah wanted it to work. That's it. Allah want, That's it. So that's the thing with us and the stress that we have in our lives. The light changed green or it changed red. Or I didn't find those shoes that I've always wanted in my size or whatever, that, that guy that I was interested in, he just got engaged or whatever the story is, whatever issues that, that we're thinking about on a daily basis, you know, my heel broke on my shoe. It's from Allah and there's a reason behind it. And if we can, in the first instance, accept, as, as we said last time, the Prophet also said that so, in perseverance and self-control, there's a lot of good, beneficial for, well, the good is for us. Not only good for the Prophet, alayhi It's not good for Allah. Allah doesn't need us. It's good for us. It's beneficial for us. If, I'm, if I keep my mind sane and I keep remembering Allah and I take care of what I've got to take care of, and I don't panic, I don't stress, I don't lose my mind, then I'm going to be the benefit. My blood pressure is not going to go up. When my blood pressure goes up, and more so for females than males, that hormonal, you know, the hormone in my in my in my mind changes, in my body changes, and the way I act changes, and, and whatever else. All those things are going on because of my computer didn't work, or my phone didn't, whatever, didn't do what it was going to do. And really, 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 when we look at it, how much do we really need our phones, and how much do we really, really need our laptops, and how much do we really, really need our printers, and our internets, and, 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 and so really, in the end, whatever makes it worse, the things we're stressing about, and the things that are getting to us, and the things that are letting us turn away from Allah. It's not even worth it. And then here's the other point. Here's the other point. That all the times you had problems with someone your whole entire life, all the times you had issues with mon no money, too much money, probably never, but or, you know, too much, not enough money, and did it get resolved? Yes or no? Didn't get resolved? Well, it will. Allah's going to resolve it one way. Either it'll get resolved or you're going to die. One of the two. So it's going to get resolved one way or the other. One way or the other. But just about everything else, I'm sure there's some things that are outstanding, but just about everything, all the things you used to stress about when you were studying for that exam, when you were doing year HSC or year 10 or year 7 or year 3, then you pass, then you go to year 4, you did. Obviously, because you can read and write and add up and whatever. It, it happens, it goes, that's it. Why? We stress about things that are unnecessary. Why? Because we put the pressure back on ourselves. Live it with Allah. It's good for you to live on the Prophet said there's heaps of good in it. There's heaps of good in it. So if a person dies, isn't the issue resolved? My printer's not printing and I die. Am I going to care about my printer? No. Nah. And you know what? Even the people I'm doing the printing for, they're going to care about the printing that I'm going to say, the bloke's dead. Oh, worry about it. It's okay. So all the things that were that bug us, that get, you know, what is it? There used to be a pet peeve. That's what it was. All the pet peeves that we have. Everyone know what a pet peeve is? I don't know what peeve is. I know what a pet is. What's a peeve? It, pe it peeves you? But where does the word peeve come from? Is that a real word, peeve? Yeah, okay. What's the slang for? Yeah, I know, but I mean, what's peeve? Like, is it a short for for what? What's it short for? Oh, anyway, okay. So, something that gets to you, something that irks you, pet peeve, 
right? So something that, that irks you, you know, what is it? What for? Why have, we, why have we got all these little things we're upset about? Upset about this, upset about that. And who's the one getting stressed out? So-and-so said that about me. Or I heard, that's the worst part. I heard that so-and-so said that about you. You know, like, it's none of your business what people think of you anyway. That's their business. Your business is to organize yourself with your Lord. So all these things we stress about daily and we waste our, we waste our life. I reckon if we, looked, if we took account of ourselves, which we're supposed to, how many things that were just useless, that useless to think about, that useless to stress over, even our money. Allah SWT says, don't worry about it. Your, your sustenance has already been written. It's, on the, it's, on the, it's in the sky. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of you. How much do we worry about money? How much do we worry about my kids, my neighbors, my brother, my sister, my, my husband, my wife? They're not doing what I want. Oh, don't worry. You don't have to worry about that. They've got a God, just like you've got a God. They've got a God, and that God is responsible for them like He's responsible for you. Leave it to God. Let your heart be free of these concerns that Allah said He's going to take care of them anyway. And our heart is tied up with these things. My pencil broke. That was a bad one in school, you know, because you had to go to the pencil sharpener and sharpen it. Yeah, like, it was stressful back then, and now we find it funny. And a lot of the things that we stress about in our lives, when we look, at, when we look back at it, we feel, why, why was I even worried about that? And why am I even worried? Why am I worried? What for? We should be the most carefree people. We should be more carefree than the hippies. Is there, more, is there like a new group of people that's more carefree than them now? Because they've been going since the 60s, and yeah. they're still going pretty good, really. Right? So they're carefree. They drive around in their combi, and they're all good. Right? They don't care. That's how we should be. Even the prophet said we should be like travelers in this world. We should be like... And when we're not, that's what we're saying. We're saying what? Like the, like the disbelievers say, had God w so wished, we would have not associated anything with him, nor would our fathers even. So not only is it, not only is it God's fault about us, but the way I was brought up, right? That's what fathers means. My culture, my heritage, my background... My, my um, genealogy, oh, my dad had, you know, he wasn't very intelligent and my mum wasn't very educated. That's my excuse. So, you know, I can't do it. That's it. Oh, my parents didn't teach me faith. They didn't teach me about God. Habibi, you're 36 years old. <laughs> I mean, how long are you going to say my dad didn't toilet train me properly for? You know, like, you, don't, you don't do it in your pants because your dad didn't toilet train you. Look, that's real. That's what people say. Oh, my parents didn't teach me. I mean, you got it like you know you got a master's degree and like you like how is that a legitimate excuse? How, in our culture, there was no deal. When we grew up, people used to drink. When we grew up, that's how it was. Like, how long? That's what the disbelievers were saying. That's what Imam Haddad is saying. He's saying that if we go down that path with ourselves, not about no one else. This is all things we all. This is going on upstairs, as they say, or in our hearts, right? We're putting ourselves. With them, when I hold the blaz of Jal, the Qadr Allah Samah Allah, you know, because of the way we think, nor would we have forbidden anything. Then he says, um, "Has he or that person not heard God's reply to them through His Prophet?" Because Allah replies in the same verse, and that's that's a mistake. There, it says verse six forty-eight. It says six one forty-eight. Is it same in yours or different? Yes, it's different. Oh, and this one, this copy says forty-eight. So they must have done it in another that's edition. Right. The second one. Yeah, the second one. It's the same verse, just the extension of the same verse. And then the first one is 6148, and the other one is 648, but it's missing a one. So that's 148 for both of them. So Allah gives them the answer in the same verse. He says to the Prophet, Say, have you any knowledge that you could exhibit for us? You follow nothing but conjectures. You only guess. قُلْ هَلْ عِنْدَكُمْ عِلْمٍ تُخْرِجُوهُ لَنَا إِنْ تَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الدَّنَّ إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا تَخْرُصُونَ So the, the response of the Prophet of Allah is that where's, where's your proof is what he's saying to him basically. Where's your proof for the fact that if God wanted you to be, to be disbelievers you would have been in your forefathers etc. So that's the same as us 
All right, some people, um, everyone, everyone wears hijab, for example, or someone's still drinking, or someone's not praying, for example, and then you start talking to them, they're not praying, it's a good example. Someone's not praying, and then you go to them, oh, you know, you know we're Muslims, alhamdulillah, Allah loves us, He wants us to pray, it's good for us. Oh, Allah, Allah hasn't guided me yet. It's not my time. So that's the kind of example that the Prophet, that Allah is giving through the Prophet to the people that say that, oh, it's God's, that's God's will. If I'm, if I'm going to be a Muslim, that's God's will. If I'm going to pray, that's God's will. So we're blaming God, but now that person who's saying that is blaming God, but now Allah is Azzawajal. Without actually knowing it, and as, and as Imam Haddad says, what they're, although not explicitly saying, what they're saying is that there was no point in God sending messages and revealing, what for? And revealing books. If, I, if, I'm, if it's God's fault, why is he sending the messages for? Why, is he, why are the messages dying? Like Sayyidina Yahya, you know, John, and the others that were killed by Bani Israel. John the Baptist, as they call him. All right? They killed him. Why? Why did he go through? Why did all the prophets, the Sahaba, go through that and they got killed and there was wars and whatever else? Why? To, for us to get the message, so the message can be spread. So don't worry. Ah, that's, that's when a person says, "Oh, that's just God's will." That means they're getting rid of all that stuff. They're saying, "No, no, that's all rubbish. That's it. There's no purpose in it. Why? Because God does what He wants anyway. So why the messages? Why the books? Why all these things?" That was a question that we asked last time. Someone asked that we're on this world to be tested, right? We're on this world to be tested, to see with the to see which one of us is the most excellent of deeds. If we didn't have that that will enough to be able to make our own choices and our own intentions and to do our own deeds, then on the day of judgment, if Allah judged us just on what He knew about us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the hujja. Right? That's the, the hujja we have with Allah. That we say to him, if, if Allah didn't send us and didn't give us free will, if he forced us to do whatever he wanted to do, subhanahu wa ta'ala, firstly it would be good anyway, so probably better for us, but that's not the case. If Allah wanted and forced us to do whether it was good or bad, and on the day of judgment he judged us, we could say to Allah, wait a minute, you didn't even give me a chance. And Allah would say, well, I know everything. We'd say, so what? That's what we could say. We could say, so what? If I would have done different. Yeah? Does that make sense? If, we, if Allah didn't give us the will to make our own intentions and do our own things, then how's He going to judge us? Yeah? That's like your mom saying, I knew you were going to do that, so are you in trouble before you do it? You can't accept that. No one can accept that. Or the cop pulls you over and says, oh, look, I'm going to give you a fine for speeding. You go, I wasn't speeding, y'all, but I know the further down the road, you know, you're going to go around that corner and you're going to speed. You've got this nice car and whatever. And you were gonna no one no one would accept that. And the example that Allah has is is far more sublime. But it's the same thing. If we don't get to do what we want to do and what we can do, then how's Allah gonna judge us? Yeah. In other words, what's the point of existing? Yeah, it'll be just for everything that they're not be just. Exactly. It'll be unjust, it'll be wrong. Exactly. But from our purposes, that's why we got the will. That's why when people say, Why do bad things happen? That's what people want. Somebody wants to do bad, right? Someone wants to steal. Someone wants to murder. Someone wants to kill. Someone wants to rape. Someone wants to pillage. Someone wants to oppress. Someone wants to be... That's what they want. And so Allah says, He tries to... It makes things in their way to, to stop them. But if that's what they want, then in the end, that's what they're going to do. Everyone's got a choice. Everyone's got a choice. And it's the choices that we make that determines our nearness or otherwise from Allah. He says, and even the idolaters, when they return to God, will not be able to use such an untenable argument. No, it's not going to roll, champ. It's not going to work. You can't say that. On the contrary, they will say, our Lord, our evil fortune overwhelmed us and we were people astray. In other words, what does that mean? That means our circumstances. غلبت علينا قالوا ربنا غلبت علينا شقوتنا وكنا قوما ضالين Oh, yeah, Allah. Yeah, so, you know, like with our circumstances. But my dad didn't raise me properly. My mom didn't raise me properly. I didn't have enough this. I didn't live next to the scholars. I didn't speak Arabic. Yeah, whatever. My parents weren't Muslim. My dad used to do this. My mom used to do that. My brothers used to do this. My cousins used to do that. At uni, they used to, at school, they bullied me. And then I had, you know, whatever. Whatever I had. And my circumstances were overwhelming. 
My circumstances were overwhelming. That's why I didn't. Re- that's why I didn't recognize you, Ya Allah. But don't worry. Now I've seen our Lord. We have now seen and heard. Send us back, and we will do right. We are now convinced. It's too late. Right? It's too late. It doesn't matter what what a person saw and what a person heard when when they're in. We're in what what they call now the realm of the unseen. We can't see the the angels. Some people can, but majority of us can't. We can't see the angel. We can't see the the mercy descending or the punishment when Allah Azza wa Jalla descending. We can't see these things. These things are, are hidden from us because if we could see them, there's no use for faith. There's no use to believe. What's the point of believing if you see it? If I tell you this is a page, duh. There's no need to have any faith. If I tell you in my pocket, there's a different kind of paper. It's plastic these days, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, really? What color is it? Blue, orange, green, yellow, purple? Then it's different. There's, there has to be a belief. There's this different thing. But when it's clear what it is, what's the use of faith? If we can see Allah, ah, don't worry about your man. There's no point for it. There's no point of having faith. So... It's too late. There's no chance. And then Allah gets to say to us on that day, inshallah, not us, gets to say to those people on that day, sorry, there's no, I know. You're going, when you go back, you're going to do the same thing. Because I know who you are. And they say, but we're not. I say, but I sent you. And I gave you all the signs. And I showed you everything. And you decided not to accept. Right? You decided not to take me as your Lord. And so there's no, there's no second chances when Allah will be judge. Which is why, Afwan, which is why that we've got to take our chances when they present themselves. We've only got one chance. And all we have is that chance. And it's our life. And it can be taken away from us any moment. Even though we, we, know we're, we can turn on the lights and drive our cars and put petrol. The petrol price went up like 40 cents. I don't hear anyone complaining. I was like, geez, petrol's expensive. But no one... Because we don't need to. We've got money. We just swipe it. We don't even worry about money anymore. We've got this card and we just touch it. Uh, swipe it. We just tap it and keep going. It wasn't that long ago I was doing a case for a client. It wasn't that long ago where people didn't even pay things over the internet or, you know, or through their bank accounts. That, like, it was like 2011. Like, I'm like, I got, he's got all these receipts. I didn't used to pay by the bank. Now, back then, we didn't, I can't even remember that we didn't used to pay by by direct debit and things. That's, that's like five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago. It's not like, you know, 1852. It's just a little while ago. All of us were alive at that time. But we've just taken it for granted. It's so easy. What, you had to go to the... And then we were talking and someone, one of the juniors was there. What, you had to go to the post office to pay the electricity bill? I was like, for real, dude, or what? And they're like, what do you mean to go to the post office to pay the electricity? Before that, before the post office used to do it, you had to go to AGL... Or, or Energy Australia, I don't want to ask anyone who remembers, only me and Abdul here, so I don't want to ask if anyone who remembers, but you had to go to the actual energy company to pay the bill. There's no Post office was like a new thing. I was like, when it came to the post office in the mid 90s, we're all happy. We only have to go to the post office. But before then, you had to go to AGL or GIO or whatever to pay the bill. Like you had to go to the office in wherever it was. There's no other way. No, there wasn't electronic transfer and everything's on the, on the, on the Wi-Fi or wherever it is. There, there's no swiping back then. You had to take your cash. I, know, I don't know if you've seen cash recently, but, you know. You had to take your cash and go to the place and pay it, and they give you a stamp on the paper, and then you've got to go home and put it somewhere. That's it. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm only talking like 20 years ago, 25 years ago. It's not like that ancient history. But because the world the way it is, we're forgetting that we forgot. To forget is one thing. But we forgot that we forgot that Allah Azza wa Jal is there. We forgot that we forgot that He controls all things, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We forgot that we forgot that if He wants good, only good will come. And if He wants to detriment us, only detriment. We forgot. We forgot that we forgot. You can sit on the chair, it's all right. You can put a chair up. Yeah, put a chair, someone help with the chair. If everyone needs one, you can have to sit on the floor. It's whoever it's voluntary. All right, so th- that's, the, that's the thing for us. The, the more we're enmeshed and enmeshed and you know, over, overawed and enthralled by the, 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 
the, the great things in technology. And as we said last time, we're not against technology. Technology is fantastic. Like we can pick up our phone and call someone, you know, thousands and thousands of kilometers away and speak to them. And we can, like, if you want to, if you want to read one of these books, you can just download it for free and put it on your device and watch it for free. It's great. The thing is, we've got to know how it works with regards to our connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. Otherwise, we'll forget that we forgot. And when a person does that, when Allah Azza they pay the price. Like, look at mental health, the mental health problems in our society. I remember before, it was like, you know, one in like 120 people will suffer in Australia will suffer a mental health episode. Now it's like one in, I don't know what's the statistics, but it's, uh, last time I remember it was one in 20. And that was, now it's one in, now it's one in four, right? That's not a coincidence. The less faith we have, the more stress we have. And the more faith we have, the less stress that we have. And so next week we'll talk about dua, inshallah, and how that relates to these things. We'll sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, and Muhammad, and Muhammad, and Muhammad. Are there any questions about any of those things or anything else? No. So the, the question is about the Shafi'i Madhab, about buying and selling online. The, the, the better option with, when it comes to transactions is to take the Hanafi position, because that talks about Urf, it talks about what's custom. So because yeah, the, 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 the Shafi'is are very, very stick, stickling about, they're very literal, more is the word. So there has to be an offer and there has to be an acceptance and it has to be verbal with the Shafi'is. But like I said, just take with the Hanafi because the Urf, the, the custom is that everyone just swipes and taps and whatever else. So take the Hanafi off. So otherwise, your, your life's going to be too hard to live. Uh, when you talk about bad things happening, there are things that are also out of human control, like tsunami, like the disasters, trees and dying. How do we justify it or try to come to terms with that? That's a good question. So the, qu the question is about how things that we consider, we, we perceive to be bad, how come they happen, like, you know, fires and, and tsunamis and, and whatever whatever else. The, the, the way we can reconcile that within ourselves is that we as believers don't just believe in this life. So there's this life and there's the next life. And sometimes if a person was to only believe in this life, then it, that would be a massive tragedy. And it is a tragedy that people lose their lives. Wars and if anyone has to leave, you can, you're free to go. So um, it's, 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 not a, it's not a pleasant thing and it's not a nice thing for it to happen. And, you know, it's sad when those things happen and, and we're affected by it, you know, especially fires and tsunamis and earthquakes and bushfires and whatever else happens. The thing is that it, and Allah Azza wa Jal knows what's beneficial for human beings. And you don't know that if someone dies in one of those things that Allah isn't going to forgive their sins, for example. And Allah isn't going to elevate their status in the next life and take them to, especially children, when, when we see children, young people dying and someone who's not valued in particular, someone who's not of age, um, legal capacity, Islamically speaking, then if they die in that age, they're certainly saved. They, they're with Sayyidina Ibrahim under the tree and they're just waiting for their time and they, they go straight to paradise. So it, particularly when it comes to children, that's the thing. And for o older people as well, the people that are oppressed are a, are a certain category with, with Allah. There's no, there's no hijab, there's no um, veil between them and God if they make a dua. So if someone dies in a state of being oppressed in whichever way it is, then, I mean, the scholars talk about different things, but they're in a, they're in a different category. They're in a category that, Narjul, we, we hope that Allah, and, and from what we've heard, that you know, their, their chance to be saved and their chance for salvation is a lot greater than, than others. So th that's one of the ways that we, that we reconcile. And then, look, sometimes the things that we don't want to say, we don't want to hear, sometimes it's the punishment of Allah. All right? But in our day and age, you can't say that, even though I just did. No, you can't because people, a lot of people of faith to accept that. Like, oh, what do you mean? God wouldn't do that. It's all loving God. Well, okay, you can think what you will. But that's one of the one of the times. And that's why you notice in countries like, you know, like the Middle East, you hardly hear of natural disasters. But in countries, let's say, for example, North Africa and North America, you hear of natural disasters all the time. All the time. Because in the Middle East, that trial and tribulation is the, the civil uprest they have or the political strife that they have. Whereas in other countries like that are more stable, they don't have those things. So it's a, you know, even heat waves, for example, in northern England and things like that, when people die, 
it's a cleansing as well for for humankind. You know, it's like being sick, getting getting the flu or something like that, or some sort of a virus or um, you know tonsillitis or whatever it is. Okay, it's not not, but it actually has a benefit for the body. It actually cleans the body. So it's, it's difficult to, to to talk about these concepts, especially the last one, to people who don't have faith because they don't they don't see a next world. They don't see a next life. So it's only about this life, and it, it's difficult. It's difficult. No. Any any other questions? Don't be shy. No. Some people who have it all commit suicide, and some people that don't have anything commit suicide. No. So it can't just be in a materialism. So, do you think that, because some sheikhs say if you've got mental illness or any form of mental illness, it's because you have lack of, like, lack of iman? Right. So, or do you think it's a test? So, that's, that's a good question. The question is if, if is all mental, mental illness tied with lack of faith? No, yeah. of course not. I mean, some people, they're sick, they have mental, mental conditions. That the, the thing is, we look when we look at the mental illnesses. We look at the DSM five. That's the standard the whole world uses, yeah. right? So now being addicted to to video games, and, and it is. I'm not saying it's not. What I'm saying is there are reasons behind those. I don't want to say lesser mental illnesses, but that's the only way I think I can describe it. Rather than someone has you know like a hormone, chemical, brainwave imbalance, or something like that, that you know that, that yeah that is physically determines that the you know the the neuro neurology is different to someone else. that's a big difference than someone who has a bad habit or a phobia not to say they're not mental illnesses they are but they they're on a different what what do they say one is a psychosis and one is a neurosis so one is a psychosis meaning it's psychosomatic it's not real like it is real but it's not physically there's no physical manifestation of it but a, a neurosis means there's a neurological problem with the biology of the person's brain. So that's probably where you might differentiate between the two. And then you, you could say that the psychosis ones are closer to not having... A, a be, not, not always, though. I mean, people suffer trauma that they need some sort of... Either it's time or some sort of intervention, some sort of therapy or whatever it might be to be able to overcome that. So it's not... And then what does Allah SWT say in the Qur'an about those things? It says, haraj. So the sick people, person who's sick, and that in, mental illness has been, has been, uh, um, has been um, a part of, of sharia of, you know, since the beginning. One, the, one of the main things is, uh, they say, for a person to, to sin, they have to have their faculties complete. And the Arabic word for, for insanity or mental illness is junoon. And the Arabic word for arts and the different types of arts there are is funun. So the scholars say as junun funun. As many different arts and as many different types of creativity there are, that's how much that's how many mental illnesses there are. They've been saying that for for thousand a thousand plus years that the Muslim scholars. And so and even when they look at mental illness they say that if someone for example in, in the case of divorce, a wife wants to divorce a husband because she says he's he's mentally ill. The scholars say, well, is it when he eats a particular food? or vice versa if it's the wife, is it this time of year? Is it when it rains? When it doesn't rain? Is it summer, winter? Is it, is it seasonal? Is it, is it um, when they travel to this area? When it, there's all the different factors that trigger people's mental illness as well. So it's not as easy as saying, oh, weak man. But the thing is that a person whose faith is weak is more susceptible. And, and same with, with, with um, physical illnesses. Because the doctors, they say most of the physical illnesses that we suffer, the, you know, they're talking... 60 or 70 percent are actually start off from psychosomatic. The, the, the way that we think about things like when, when does a person, when do you get a flu? Think about it. When last time you got a flu, what were the, the circumstances that led up to it? Drained. Right? Drained, tired, stressed out. Right? That's what I mean, those things. So there's a weakness in the body that allowed, weakness in the mind, if you like, that allowed. You know, the, the virus, the, the, the bacterial infection, whatever, to become stronger because the immune system was deficient at that time because of the stresses that were going on in that person's life. And really it's no different to, to psychological psychosis, if you like, that when the iman, when the faith and the soul is, is, is depleted or depressed, and I don't mean depressed in the clinical word, but held down depressed, 
then of course there's more chance for, you know, for, for mental, it's just it's mutually exclusive. That's it, that's, that's how it has but to be. But depression brought on by lifestyle choices or, you know, things that you're controlled would be obviously a bit different to a medical, like an illness like bipolar and schizophrenia, for instance, though. So could you view those as tests from Allah? Because depression can be brought on and triggered by a lot of things, whereas bipolar and schizophrenia, you know, there's a lot of scientific evidence about how these are caused. So they think partly environmental and part like, you know, um, imbalances. And so it just... So as I said, stick to the original point. No, it's a test. There's no doubt. I was just giving it some examples to say there's a, there's a bit of a differentiation. And if we are to focus on one, it would be those factors because... Basically, what it is in a lot of those circumstances is an individual not being able to accept the circumstances they're in. Post-traumatic stress, all these things, even depression, the types of anxiety. Basically, some sort of trauma has happened to that individual and they're unable to deal with that trauma. That's basically... I mean, look, I'm not giving you the, the, the breakdown of the whole DSM's like that thick, DSM-5. I'm not, I'm not a psychologist or a, psych, or a psychiatrist, but I'm saying generally speaking for us lay people, that's, that's how we can deal it. But... Of course it's a test. Stubbing your toe on the, on, on, you know, in the middle of the night or whatever on the bed is a test. You're getting pricked by a thorn, which doesn't happen to us because we're city people. So whatever it may be, it's, it's all a test. You know, the computer not torn to the printer. They're all, all those things are tests. But where the test comes from, it, that, the, the um, defining where the cause of it is allows us to be in the lead, like by, God, by God's will, inshallah, overcome that test. So that's why we look to you know, to, to diagnose what the situation is so we can overcome it. Anyway, in most of those, those illnesses we're talking about, what's the cure for the psychosomatic ones, the, the, the psychosis? What's the cure? What do they say is the cure for them all? Well, they don't really say that there is a cure. There's I'm not talking about the heavy-duty ones. I'm talking about the, you know, they say self-confidence. Yeah, or like right? Yeah. But like the med meditation is to get to that self-confidence. But what's the answer to most of them? Self, which is what self confidence is what security, right? Confidence it comes in Arabic. The word iman comes from the word aman, which means security and confidence. So iman, that's the answer. That you know, like that's what even the, the psychologists and, and medical health medical health professionals and the, you know that's what they say. Most people need like even uh, sexual dysphoria, gender dysphoria, when people think there are the different scale. Or some people are, some people aren't. Whatever. Um, so just let that person feel that they're, they're comfortable in their skin. So if their name is whatever, Jackie, call them Jack. Whatever the case might be, right? If they refer to him as a he, refer to him as a her, or vice versa. Why? So that can, person can feel confident, secure, safe, content, if you like, in the end. Yeah, so that Iman is the key. It's the key for, for, for us because we, then we can reconcile the difficulties that we have in our lives. We can say that, yeah, look, yeah, as bad as this is, I know it's from Allah and I can look to tomorrow. But what's anxiety? I can't look to tomorrow. I'm fearful of tomorrow. What's depression? Fearful of yesterday. Right? And Allah this is in the Quran. Right. He says exactly the thing. They won't be anxious, nor will they be depressed. It's exactly what it means in the Quran. So if I've got Iman in those two circumstances, I'm saying, don't worry, tomorrow is going to be better. How am I going to be? And if I look at my past and say, yeah, I, I stuffed up big time, but I know that's up to Allah, He can forgive that. Allah, forgive me. How's that going to be? So as an example, as an example, like I said, I'm not going through the whole DSM-5 and saying that's the answer. Yeah. I'm just telling you that generally, for us lay people that inshallah don't have the, those serious mental health issues, like heaps of times, heaps of times, heaps of times, sisters of rain, and said, you know, me and my husband, we weren't on din, we're on drugs, we're doing whatever. Now we're on din, he's got a mental health issue. He used to take his drugs, he was fine. his medicine, not drugs. The Americans call it drugs, that's why I got the word, right? The drugstore in America, you don't go to the pharmacy, you go to the drugstore, which is really what it is, right? So, and then he became on din and he's now praying and now he stopped taking his medication because the brothers in the mosque, Jazamullah Khayyad, <laughs> told him, no, you, you need, all you need is your man, don't take your medicine. What are you on about? Take your medicine. If one day you become strong enough that you don't need your medicine, okay, but don't. And then I, I heaps of them, I talk to him, the guy goes, yeah, no worries, I'm going to take it. Takes it, he's fine for like a month, two months. And then his, his, his buddies, oh, you don't need that, bro. Dr. So-and-so, Dr. Ali and Dr. Mahmoud, the professors and PhDs that they are and research fellows at this institute, <laughs> telling him, no, no, don't take it. What, what do you mean don't take it? 
Are you going to lose your wife over it? Are you going to lose your family over it? No, no, no. And not one or two or not ten cases. What do you mean? You're sick. Take your medicine, bro. If they had diabetes, they'd take the medication for diabetes. They would. They have Iman. Mashallah, the Iman they have, bro. You know, like, what Iman are you talking about here? The Iman, the Sahaba, they used to walk on water. The Sahaba walked on water. It was documented. They walked from, from the Arab Peninsula to Bahrain. They walked across the water. They chucked, chucked in fire. They, they survived. That, all right, if you've got Iman like that, don't take your medicine. But if you haven't got Iman like that, take your medicine and take, take a double dose if you think you've not taken it. Maybe it'll calm you down so you can take it rather than think about it. You know what I mean? So, and for us in our community as Muslims, it's much maligned. Like if you have to go to the, the mental health profession, oh, bro, there's something badly wrong with you. Like you're gone. You're gone. It's over for you. Just if you have to think about going there. That's more male, though, isn't it? I don't know. I think it's both. I mean, I, I deal, yeah, man, we've got this big issue. But so to feel like we have court ordered, you know, court people have ordered to go to court to, to therapy family. What? Or the kids are ordered and the husband's losing it. Why are you sending my, nothing wrong with my kids? Because obviously the kids are an extension of him. So if the kids have got mental health issues, so is he. But he does, but he doesn't want to admit that, nor does he want to see it in his children. So it's a massive taboo. It's a massive taboo. But our mental health professionals once upon a time were our mashiach. And the salihin and the pious people, the righteous people, whether they were mashiach or not, didn't make the people that were close to Allah, because they had that state, they were close to God, that just being around those people allowed the people whose faith was weaker and, and you know, that needed help to, to get that help. And I always tell you the story about the, the guy that didn't have a kid for 20 years. Remember that story? So only some people remember it. Some others, they got bigger issues than that. Right? So the guy, exactly, that's the one, right? He, he uh, hadn't, didn't have a kid for 20 years. He had all girls, sorry. Then he wanted a boy. And then he came in the mosque and he made an announcement. He said, if my wife doesn't give me a boy this year, Who's, who's, um, whose face is bigger than a hand, then I'm going to divorce her. You know, he wants a boy, like he wants a, you know, massive boy. And then what happened? He was just upset. This Arabs, that's how they are. They're emotional people, right? And they want a boy because a boy is like, you know, that's it, I've got status now. So his wife, his wife got pregnant, she has a boy in that year, has to divorce her now. Because he made a, he said, I swear by Allah, I'm going to divorce her. And the Shafi's, the Shafi's, you can't, like some of the, of the madahib, you can say that that's it, pay the kafara, you know, let a slave free or whatever, and, and you can, don't have to do it. But he couldn't find anyone. Couldn't find any of the mashaykh. They all said, no, nah, you've got a divorce. So he loves her. But he was just upset, you know. So he went around to all the mashaykh. He went around to all the... So you remembering the story now? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> right? So he went around to all the mashaykh, went around to all the mashaykh, and they, and they couldn't, get a, couldn't get an answer. Then one of the sheikhs goes, there's that guy, he's a special guy, he lives he's in that valley. Go see him. And they, what do you mean him? We know he's a bit loony, for use of a better word. And they went, and the guy had a palm thrond, you know, the palm, palm leaf? And he was riding on it. He's a scholar. He's riding on it like it's a horse, going... <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy sees him. He goes, is this the guy? He goes, yeah, the guy with the hand of dad. He goes, is that the guy? He goes, yeah, he calls him. And he goes, so-and-so. And the guy pulls up the horse. Whoa! <laughs> real story. It's a real story. And he goes, yes. He goes, look, this is my situation. This is my situation. This, et cetera, et cetera. Then he said to him two words. He said, whose hand? Yours or the boy's? Right? A head bigger than a hand. So the boy's, the baby boy, is, is his head bigger than his hand? Of course. Yeah, he is. The baby boy's hand. Even my head's bigger than my hand. You remember that joke? Is your head, is your head bigger than your hand? And you push the hand. <laughs> right? That's the one. Right? So... Then, then, then what did the guy say to me? Anything else? He said, no. He said, ha ha. And he went off on his pamphlet. So those, those people, those people existed. Those people exist. And the Muslims, their stories, this is written in the books of fiqh. Right? This is written in the books of, of jurisprudence. That, that's how that question was dealt with. That question of should the guy have to divorce his wife because he swore by Allah that he would if he didn't give birth to a child whose head was bigger than a hand. But that, that so in our, in our what, the, the, um, the court jester of the king, you know the court jester? What do you think, he was normal? He was abnormal, but the society had a place for him. Right? Society had a place, or her, as the case might be. The, the, there was a crazy old lady, 
for use of a better phrase, in our village in, 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 in Lebanon. And she used to come around and her daughter died when she was really young. And so she always, always say, am I telling the truth or am I lying? Am I lying or telling everything she said? Oh, oh, yesterday I went to the city. Am I telling the truth or am I lying? And, and people used to, used to accept it. She'd come around tell you know, far out stories and she, she wasn't 100%. But no one ever told you not 100%. No one ever said to you, you have a mental health issue. They just treated her as she was. Or the, 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 the wali that Habib Kadim told us about, this is a great story. One of the, the salihin, like he wasn't 100% like the guy with the palm front. He used to see the women in the streets and he used to grab him here. Yeah, he's a pious man. He used to grab him here. And everyone started, all the ladies started complaining. He used to grab him there. Not there, there. <laughs> right? Up on the shoulder. Right? He's a pious guy, everyone knows, but he's not, a, you know, he's a bit extraordinary did they go and beat him up no they they found out that any woman who that guy did that to she never get never even thought about adultery it was saying from Allah right but did they no they didn't they just said beware of the guy if you see him try and you know get away from the bloke right that's something that's it's like the today didn't we read Surah Al-Kahf today on Friday we read the story of the cave sunk the boat Killed the kid, fixed up the wall. We have to remember these things. That's why we read it. These things are that's the Allah's business. So mental health has been a long thing in the Muslim world. And and one time I'll tell you this as well, but just so that you know, went to a conference one time, mental health, because we were getting a lot of mental health people coming to the mosque. And I was dealing with them, I was like, man, these people, I don't know how to deal with these people, so I need to get educated on it. So I went to this big conference, all these you know, psychologists and psychiatrists, but I asked permission, they said, yeah, you can come with your circumstances. And after three or four days, like, everyone's looking at me, what's this bloke doing here? You know, and then after three or four, three days, four days, there was a question time with the, the big head professor. Then I go to her, look, this is the situation. People come to me and they say that, you know, they, they see Mary, every Mary, you know, the mother of Jesus every night. And people come they, to me and they say that, you know, I have to go to the ocean every day because I have to call the waves in. These are people who became Muslim, right? And other people have all their other issues. How do I, how how do I deal with these people? She goes, "What do you do?" I said, "Nothing. I'll give them money. We take them, go to take up the road and give them something to eat. Someone takes them. I see someone in the mosque. I know he's got money. I said, give him money." And she goes, "Is that, is that okay?" One of the guys he comes is a good one. He comes in the in the prayers and he's, you know, how we all line up. The men line up and he rips massive farts every single time. <laughs> every single time, he get, he stands in the in the, but he's not hundred percent. Do you think anyone says anything to him? No. When he's done, someone takes him home for dinner. Then he comes the next day, someone takes him for lunch. And then, you know what the lady did? This is the hell of honcho. She turned off the microphone at the big conference. She turned off the microphone and goes, see, see what that gentleman there said? That's how you treat mental health and uh, people with mental health. And I'm not talking, you know, psychotic and, and um, those. I'm not talking those types of people. Those people are completely different. But she, she said, you know, that... The more you tell a person with a mental health problem, they've got a mental health problem, they don't think, they think they're normal, right? They think they're normal because they see the world from their own perspective. The more you tell them there's something wrong with them, the more they feel that they're sick. So the more you bring the ambulances, the more you bring the doctors, the more, and the more you just leave them to their own devices, of course, as long as they're not being dangerous and you know, all those other things, then it's better. And I was like, wow, subhanAllah. Then after that, all the professors and that want to talk to me after that. Because like, how, how do you guys deal with that stuff? Well, just deal with them. They're people. Why? Because we know they're from? Right, from Allah. And it's our duty as, as human beings to be good to other human beings. So we, we don't want to do that. If someone gets old, we put them in a home. If someone becomes handicapped, we're like, oh, just, you know, to the side. If, someone's, if someone wears a hijab, I saw it today on the train. The lady came to sit. She was wearing a hijab. This lady came in. She was going to sit and she saw her wearing a hijab. She had two seats next to her open. All the other seats were basically full. She looked, 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 looked and sat, asked the people to move over. And then when she sat, she's just staring at the lady wearing the hijab. So people have, when someone's different, when someone's not how we want them to be, when someone is, you know, we want to, why? We should bring those people in. They're the people that we should bring in. And of course, you know, we're the ones who are richer for it. We're the ones who are better for it. Tell